All right, guys, so here's a few things that we've sold just this week while we were driving from uh, Ohio all the way down to Lubbock, where we are staying now. And the question is, should I wait until I go home to ship these or should I ship them now? Let me answer that for you. See, working from a certain location is one thing, but working from on the road is completely different, right? So when you have time on the road, you're not making labels at home. You're making labels for when you get to the next hotel so you can ship things out for the next hotel. See, people say coin dealing is easy. See, some people say coin dealing is like, you know, you're buying something from one person, selling it to another. It's fast. It's, it's simple, but not necessarily. You know, you have to go find it, sell it to somebody else, ship it process it but also you have to go find it again when you have to go find it again that can be the tough part so um what's up guys it's truth Kush collectibles welcome back to a brand new video in this video we're going to be going from ohio to lubbock texas where we're going to be with our 12th subscriber and we're going to sit down with him possibly buy some coins possibly help him out send stuff to pcgs and cac and so he allowed us to sit down and talk with you guys about which coins that we're probably interested in and maybe we can make a deal and so excited to take you guys along let's get this video started so what are some things that you need before walking into a situation where you have to name prices on certain coins and we've had a lot of comments recently asking us what is some things you guys use to check on comps so the guy that we're meeting with today he has a lot of great coins coins from a few hundred bucks to a few thousand dollars to over ten thousand to over twenty thousand i'm sure and the things that you need really is gray sheet so gray sheet bid what is gray sheet bid on the coin you also need to know what the comps are for that coin a few ways to find those out is using the gray sheet app going to um, that coin, that grade, tapping on what the gray sheet value is, and it'll come up with the most recent comps of that coin. Uh, PCGS CoinFax also has a great amount of comps for you, and eBay also has a good amount of comps for you. So if you can use all those things, combine them together, that'd be really good. Another thing you could also use is Great Collection. Um, they have an auction archive, so there's a lot of coins that go through at Great Collections that have never really um, shown up are uh, revealed on gray sheet and so what you can do is you can scroll down go to coin auction archive and you can look at all the coins from any grade that have sold on great collections with a CAC sticker without a CAC sticker NGC PCGS CAC G everything right so when you're walking into a deal like this though you're looking at those numbers those numbers mean everything to you and you have to be super honest right so if He's priced a coin too high because he's in it too high and a, a dealer sold it to him very high. You just got to tell him, right? You got to be honest with him. And you also have to say, you know, uh, this is what we'd buy it for. This is what we'd sell it at. I, and when you're starting to do more coin deals, you end up saying, oh, I bought this coin recently in this grade for this amount and I sold it for this amount. So everything for them is um, a lot more simple because you're looking at everything you're analyzing all the data and then you're coming to them with what you would pay or what you wouldn't pay or if they paid too much you just be honest with them all right so so it kind of depends on all the relationship that you've had with them in the past so we've met with this uh, collector many times we got to sit down with him many times talk with him and it's overall a great experience and there's one thing that i would recommend for you as a coin dealer or wanting to become a coin dealer you know vest pocket dealers end up looking at the coin and the profit. And we all need to look at the coin and the profit every time. But most of the time, where the bigger coin dealers get it right is that they've looked at the coin and the profit for so long, but now they're moving into a space where they have to focus on relationships. Because the relationships that you'll have and how you progress with those relationships is ultimately how you will develop a coin business. It's not somebody that you can buy a coin from once, it's somebody that you can buy and sell to for the next 10, 15, 20 years or into the next generation. You know, Maybe you're, not, you're selling to the dad um, for 15 years and then you're selling to the son for the next 10 years. Everything boils down to a relationship. So focus on the long term rather than the short term. You don't want to focus on right now, rather what can you do to help somebody in the moment to further that relationship and further that trust because at the end of the day you want the hobby to succeed you want everybody to be happy and at least know that you're on the same page when you leave a meeting they need to be confident that you know what you're doing and that you want the best for them before you want the best for yourself that's what a relationship is and so 
Well, let's jump into buying some coins, talking to the collector. All right, guys, so we just got wrapped up with the collector. We are back in the hotel room. No, I didn't get to film while we were there. I, in case he felt like it was more of a personal time to enjoy coins, sit, talk to the collector about just things that are going on in their life, and sometimes that's just the way it goes. So, full double row box of decent amount of stuff. We also got some stuff that uh, you guys would be really shocked at, really awesome coins. We also got to pick up some bullion as well to show you guys. So, um, yeah, overall though, this collector has spent many years trying to assemble a uh, really high-end commem set, and he had some extras that he wanted to pass by us. We uh, spent close to, I think, twelve, thirteen thousand dollars in this deal, and we're just excited to show you guys everything that we got. We're going to be breaking down how much we paid for certain coins, just so we can give you guys kind of a mile marker of what you should pay, maybe. So here are one of the coins that we ended up buying. This is a 1916 Standing Liberty Quarter Grade Mint State 64. Overall, it's a, you know, probably a, I would consider an off-white coin. Not many of these on the market that are available for people to buy. And so it's just uh, crazy to be able to hold this in your hand. A lot of the ones that we've ever handled have been poor ones or they've been, you know, good sixes, VG8s. But this one, it's, uh, it's all there. It's a really great coin. And so excited to offer it to you guys. Let's jump into some more coins, show you some more interesting pieces that we picked up along the way. So when we talk about servicing or helping out a customer, there's a few things that we got to accomplish in this video and with this collection. See, we're not only there to buy coins necessarily, we're also there to help the customer where they need help. Do they need help with sending things to PCGS, to CAC? Um, do they need things sold like bullion or possibly jewelry? And what coins do they want to sell to you outright? That might also be in the mix. But primarily with this customer, he ended up selling us a lot of his extra commems. He has a 144 commemorative set, and it's a pretty high grade one, and he wanted to let, her, let the offcasts go. And so he ended up selling us, I think about 50 coins, 55 coins, somewhere in there. But along the way, he said, hey, can you help me out with this? And can you help me out with that? We're also sending in two coins to PCGS form. One's a three-legged buffalo, one's a 32 um, Washington quarter. We also have other things that he needs help with. As you guys know, gold is at an all-time high, and so he said, hey, can you try to help me move some of this gold? And so what we're going to do is we're going to use our connections, and we're going to help him sell the gold for as much as possible. And so we ended up sitting down with this customer and looking at his 144 commemorative set, and we picked a few coins that we wanted to send to CAC for him. And so we're going to spend the time, write it up on the CAC submission, send it out, get the results back, and then we're gonna drive those coins back to him. So when we're talking about servicing a customer, sometimes it's not necessarily about what you can buy, but it's about what you can do to help them achieve their goals, either in numismatics or with stacking gold and silver or platinum. So there's a few things that this customer wanted us to sell that were bullion related primarily. You could see some older US gold here, some $20 gold pieces, some saints, some libs, but you also see some more modern stuff like this buffalo that's one ounce or this proof one ounce American Gold Eagle. And there's also this American Gold Eagle right here from 2007. See, all these things do have a value, but sometimes when you bring it into a shop or you're at a show and you go to the first person that you might be able to talk to, they might not give you the strongest number. And so what we do as a service is we try to call and whoever gives us the best price, we normally just relay that to the customer and then we make a deal. And so just a cool group of coins and there's a lot of people out there right now looking for gold. So if you guys are interested in anything like this, make sure to give us a call. So this is a $20 St. Guns that's uncirculated and we're gonna run the numbers and show you guys a little bit about what we do to maybe price this coin out. So. This is the day that we're recording it. I'm gonna post it right there. I'm gonna post the melt value, and I'm also gonna post what the wholesalers are buying these for. And I'm also gonna post um, you know, what this coin would melt at. So you have all those numbers in your head. And so when you go and offer these to different dealers or different customers, you can work within those margins and help get that number that the customer might want for this saint. 
everything is different. Some coins that are old might be XF or VF. Some coins might be have a scratch or issues. So all that kind of plays a part in the value of the coin. See with dealers and wholesalers, if a coin has problems like scratches or cleaning or is a different grade than mint state, most of the time that just reduces the value of the coin, maybe by 20, maybe by 50, maybe by $100. So it's something for you to consider and start to move towards if you're wanting to become a coin dealer. So here's something else that's pretty interesting from the buy. So he ended up having 15 1926 piece dollars graded mint state 63 by PCGS. Someone sent these in a long time ago, I think two original rolls, and he ended up buying 15 of them. And so he said, I wanted to keep one for my collection, but we ended up buying 14 1926 piece dollars. And so, uh, you know, it's cool to hear stories about that, but also buy really nice coins. These were really flashy, nice luster, and uh, you never know what you might walk into when you're at a client's house. Now let's move into the coins that we purchased. These are some nice pieces. And just to let you guys know, this is a small portion of everything that we picked up from the client's house. So make sure to check out everything on AcousticCollectibles.com. We end up posting new purchases every time a new video airs. So if we're showing you guys these coins right now, that means they're going live right now. So make sure to go buy them if you feel like the price is fair for you. All right guys, so I have two trays to show you today. The first coin I wanna show you is this 1893S Morgan dollar. It's graded fine, 12 by PCGS. It's CAC approved, it's super original, and there's a really high demand for coins like this, especially when they're CAC approved because like we said, a lot of things can happen to coins and when they're in their most wholesome original state, that's where a lot of the value comes from when you're seeing a disparity in the market between cleaned and beat up 93s's and wholesome original 93s's. So like we said, we bought a bunch of commems that he didn't necessarily need for his set anymore. And I picked out a few that I really enjoyed myself, like this 35D Texas commemorative half. The luster on this coin is, is phenomenal. Kind of hard to pick up on in this video, but just a stunning coin with nice rim toning and uh, a little bit in that old holder where you can't see the rim. Then we picked up a nice sesquicentennial commemorative half. These become very tough to find in 64, 65. And uh, this is about where the numbers, you know, start to get a little crazy. This coin is only a $250 coin, but 64 plus and 65, they become bonkers. So there's definitely a demand for 64 sesquicentennials because buying one 65 is a lot more money and people just want to develop a nice set and not spend a bunch at the same time. A nice 1936 York commemorative half in Mint State 67. Beautiful design, mark free, and uh, love buying high end commems like this. This one is actually super affordable in 67, which is cool. And 68, that's where the jump happens. So, the other coin I want to show you is this 1918 Lincoln uh, commemorative half in Mint State 66. Beautiful luster on the coin, nice original haze. And uh, once again, just before any jump in price. Then we have some really nice baller coins. So we have this 1916 that we were talking about earlier. I call this coin off-white, not white. It has a little toning to the coin and uh, it's just a phenomenal coin that doesn't come up very often. Most of the time there's a lot of people out there looking for this coin and so being able to not only have it but also offer it to you guys is a treat in itself. And you get to sit there and just say, wow, what a beautiful piece of history. We have a 42 Walker, and this one's an old, thick NGC holder. And just a more common date, but the holder's there. The, the back embossing's there as well, and it's a nice-looking coin. Then we bought this 1925 Stone Mountain commemorative half. Just a beautiful, off-white, flashy Stone Mountain. Exactly what you want a Stone Mountain to look like. If you're adding it to your collection, just blinding in terms of luster, great detail, and rather mark-free. Then we have a few kind of proof coinage to show you here. This 1873 Proof 67 Cameo 3 cent nickel. I mean, just look how deep the mirrors are on this coin. Love it so much. And then we have this more affordable 1885 Proof Seated Quarter. It's got like a little bit of a darker tone to the coin, has some hairlines out in the right field, but that's what's to be expected on those proof 61s to 63s and 64s. And so that's just the way it comes. Then we have this 1904 proof Morgan dollar with some nice color to it. Um, we're gonna have to buff this one out before it hits the website, but 
It's a uh, very beautiful. Only 650 of these were minted and just tough to run into proof Morgan dollars with any type of eye appeal and uh, for an affordable price. And so we ended up getting that one. And here's this 1888 three cent nickel. It's created in state 67. It came from the Pogue collection. This coin is phenomenal just in terms of how problem free the coin is, how rich and wholesome the coin is. And it came from a nice little pedigree. And so definitely something cool to show you guys. And so thank you guys for taking a look at just a few of our new purchases. All right, guys. So wanted to talk to you a little bit about what coins we bought and some things that we could talk about with pricing and how maybe uh, our thought process led into buying some coins and hopefully helping you guys out in the future when you're buying coins to resell. So we ended up buying those 1926 piece dollars, 14 of them. And so gray sheet on those coins were about 125. I could see comps anywhere between 120 to 130. So buying them at gray sheet, we really wouldn't make any money. And when you're buying 14 at a time, you have to kind of be in them well because you're not going to sell all 14 at once. You're going to sell two or three at a time for the next few months and you'll get your money back. And so what happened was we ended up buying all those coins for about 1400 bucks. So we're in those coins for $100 each. And when they sell, we'll make about 20% margin before we ship them. And so uh, those are those coins. Let's talk about some more. The next coin I'd like to talk to you about is a 1932S Washington Quarter graded G6 by NGC. We paid $43 for this coin. They sell any between 50 to $60. So we ended up buying this coin and probably gonna make about 20%, maybe 25% when it's all said and done. The tough thing about more common coins is that they can take a little bit longer to sell just because there's so many out there, so many to choose from, and sometimes they're not as high in demand as one coin might be in 63 or 64. And so that coin will sell for us, but we did pay pretty strong for it. Some dealers don't wanna pay anything for the cheaper stuff, but I think we pay a lot. The next coin is an 1885-0 Morgan Dollar Grade Mint State 66. Overall, a very nice, almost white, probably an off-white coin. Has a little toning to it, but a really great appearance. We ended up paying $280 for this coin. A lot of these in NGC sell for anywhere between 300 to 320, 325. So you have to be back of comps a little bit just because of how expensive it is to sell on eBay and other platforms. We're gonna lose 4% on our website, 9% on eBay and uh, we're gonna offer that 4% discount if someone sends a check. So we offer 280, we're probably gonna sell it anywhere between 310 to 340, which is what we're gonna list it for on eBay. And so overall, a really nice coin. If it was in a PCGS holder, we would have to offer more because they sell for a lot more in those holders, which is unfortunate, but it also just goes to show you sometimes you know, people pay a lot of money for certain holders and sometimes the coin can be second fiddle. So one of the commemoratives I'd like to talk about is this 1936S Oregon commemorative half in 66 CAC. It's an old thick holder. It's got some nice toning to it. It's got all the qualities you'd want for a nice commem, right? And so we ended up paying $300 for this coin. Most of the comps without a sticker are about 275 to 290. And so we paid strong and we're gonna sell it and make a little bit of money. But I think that sometimes with the right coin, you have to pay very strong for it just because it's beautiful and you don't wanna miss the opportunity to sell this to a different person, add it to their set and get them super excited about buying more coins and uh, working with you more. And so hopefully this has helped you guys, showing you guys some numbers, breaking it down for you and just giving you the brass tacks of what things sell for, what we buy things for, and give you a realistic expectation of what you might pay for things when you're sitting down with a collector. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts on the things we talked about today, relationship versus kind of a customer type of thought process. Make sure to comment your thoughts on the coins. Make sure you guys subscribe. More videos coming out every single week. We want you guys to be a part. Just hit 7,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. We're on our way to 10 and we couldn't thank you guys enough. We'll see you guys next time.